the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. A 184, Isaiah 32 35. About South Judah and Egypt's alliance. For the restoration of Israel, God prepared a king who would rule mankind righteously and judge justly. First point Despite Isaiah's naked performance for three years, King Hezekiah still made the alliance with Egypt. Despite Isaiah's performance for three years, Hezekiah still went ahead and made the alliance with Egypt. At this, God told Hezekiah what a pointless thing he did. Who go down to Egypt without consulting me? Who look for help to Pharaoh's protection? to Egypt's shade for refuge, but Pharaoh's protection will be to your shame. Egypt's shade will bring you disgrace. To Egypt, whose help is utterly useless, therefore I call her Lehab, the do-nothing. Even after hearing this, the people of South Judah ignored God's warning. Therefore, God told Isaiah the punishment South Judah would receive. A thousand will flee at the threat of one. At the threat of five, you will all flee away, till you are left like a flagstaff on a mountain top, like a banner on a hill. This punishment was recorded in Leviticus, and it was the opposite route to God's blessing. If South Judah kept to a kingdom of priests, they would have experienced God's blessing. Five of you will chase a hundred, and a hundred of you will chase ten thousand, and your enemies will fall by the sword before you. I will look on you with favor and make you fruitful and increase your numbers, and I will keep my covenant with you. However, South Judah failed to believe God's covenant and also the promises God gave them if they kept the laws of the kingdom of priests. Despite this, God still planned their restoration after their punishment. Hearing this, Isaiah's heart became overwhelmed by God's mercy and love. As such, God is always ready to forgive those who repent and come to Him. He, moreover, is willing to guide them. God told the people how they could repent and return to him. And now God told Isaiah how the Assyrian Empire was to fall. The concept of Assyria falling was a celebratory news for most of the surrounding countries. This was because Assyria had conquered, invaded, and attacked so many of their surrounding countries. Next, in Isaiah chapter 31, God's rebuke of South Judah continued. The first concerned their alliance with Egypt. Something similar had happened in the days of Solomon. Next, God told them that he would restore them once the time came. God waited for their repentance. God told them that the fall of Assyria was God's decision. Second point. Isaiah eventually spoke of the restored land through the Messiah. God told Isaiah of the fall of Assyria, and then he went on to speak about the coming of the Messiah. See, a king will reign in righteousness, and rulers will rule with justice. When the Messiah came, the following blessings would come true. First, each one will be like a shelter from the wind and a refuge from the storm. Second, it will be like streams of water in the desert and the shadow of a great rock in a thirsty land. Third, the eyes of those who see will no longer be closed and the ears of those who hear will listen. 
Force the fearful heart will love and understand, and the stammering tongue will be front and clear. Fifth, the fool will no longer be called noble, and the scoundrel will not be highly praised. God told Isaiah of the trial of the people. In Isaiah chapter 3, God rebuked the nobles of South Judah who lived lavish lives. But now in Isaiah chapter 31, God warned the women of Jerusalem and their attitudes. God went again to speak about the coming of the Messiah, till the Spirit is poured on us from on high, and the desert becomes a fertile field, and the fertile field seems like a forest. The Lord's justice will dwell in the desert. His righteousness live in the fertile field. The fruit of that righteousness will be peace. Its effect will be quietness and confidence forever. This concerned the return of the captives from Babylon and the restoration of the kingdom of priests, and then the coming of Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God. Isaiah spoke of the Messiah who would bring justice and righteousness. Thus, the people were to turn to God rather than relying on Egypt or Assyria. Third point, Isaiah prayed to God to save the people of a kingdom of priests. Isaiah cried to God for grace. Lord, be gracious to us. We long for you. Be our strength every morning, our salvation in time of distress. Although Isaiah lamented about the people not listening to God, he nevertheless pleaded to God to save the people from Assyria. It appeared that Isaiah was proclaiming judgment on his own people, as if he was anti-South Judah, but his proclamation was his expression of love towards his country. He truly wanted his people to turn to a kingdom of priests. Isaiah spoke of how God would save South Judah eventually. The peoples will be burned to ashes like cut thorn bushes. They will be set ablaze. You who are far away, hear what I have done. You who are near, acknowledge my power. Isaiah then sang of God's restoration and of God's peace. Fourth point, God proclaimed the punishment on Edom, who did not help in saving their brother nation, South Judah. Through Isaiah, God proclaimed judgment upon the wicked. God furthermore added his judgment on Edom, who were evil in God's eyes. God claimed that he would not forget that Edom turned their eye when their brother nation, South Judah, was facing hardship. During Exodus and also during the days of King Ahaz, Edom did not care to look after their brother nation. Thus, God proclaimed punishment on them. The descendants of Edom resided in Petra, and it was accessible via a narrow canyon, making it impenetrable. But God proclaimed that Petra would fall and that the place would become full of wild animals. God told through Isaiah that everything he says will come true. Fifth point. Isaiah sang of the kingdom of God, which had everlasting peace. From Isaiah chapters 1 to 35, God's message was that he would judge all nations and that he wished to restore South Judah through a kingdom of priests. Isaiah used these words to console South Judah. He furthermore convinced the people that the day of salvation would come. We can see something similar when St. John tried to convince the people to persevere through dark times in Revelation. Isaiah went on to talk about God's glory. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom, like the crocus it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it. 
the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Isaiah then sang praises to God for his salvation. Moreover, Isaiah sang of the everlasting peace in the kingdom of God. Similar content can be found in Revelation. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I'm making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. I am thrilled that you have downloaded the Tondoc app. The Tondoc app is not like any other app in the world today as well as in the body of Christ today. Dr. Biyongo Zhou has devoted his entire life to teaching men and women like yourself to understand the entirety of the Word of God as a masterful and beautiful story from Genesis to Revelation. Dr. Zhou is a sought after speaker worldwide. He's a cutting edge pastor and leader. He is a renowned theologian and a prolific writer. And you're going to be equipped and energized like never before to understand and apply the Word of God into your life. Again, thank you for downloading the Tondoc app.